Hi everyone and welcome back to Tech Cravers. Happy Nintendo Switch 2 day. While I'm still waiting on my own unit to arrive, I figured this would be the perfect time to show you something equally exciting. How to get Tears of the Kingdom running beautifully on your Steam Deck. Yes, I'm talking about a rock solid 30 frames per second with barely noticeable dips. Smooth gameplay that makes the experience feel native. But to get there you're going to need a bit of patience. Because while in the end the result is 100% worth it, we're going to go through several steps to make it happen. I'll walk you through every single plugin and mod you need, including how to set up power tools, cryo utilities tools, and Deki Undervolt plugin. I'm personally installing power tools via the Emudeck installer, but feel free to use whichever method you prefer. And who knows, you might already have most of these tools installed and just need to copy my exact settings. By the way, I will be censoring quite a lot of visual and gameplay footage in today's video, since some people out there aren't too thrilled about having their masterpiece showcased this way. I hope you understand and appreciate the effort regardless. So if you're ready to unlock the full potential of Tears of the Kingdom on your Steam Deck, let's dive in and make this magic happen. Before we get to the various tools we'll be installing in today's video, you'll obviously also need your Tears of the Kingdom ROM file. I personally dumped my own game using my modded Switch OLED. If you're curious about how to mod your own Switch using a mod chip, I actually have a full step-by-step -step installation guide available. A membership costs $3 per month, and apart from that exclusive guide, you also get access to exclusive emojis, a membership badge, and other behind-the-scenes content that regular viewers won't see. And of course you can cancel your subscription at any time. Anyway, the first thing you need to do, if you haven't already, is to set your pseudo password. This is basically your master password that you'll need later on for installing tools and making system level changes. To do that, open the Steam Deck menu in the lower left corner and click on your user icon at the top to go to your account page. Then hit change password. Choose any password you like, just make sure you remember it because you'll definitely need it later on in this guide. Next up, it's time to install Power Tools, an essential plugin for tweaking performance on your Steam Deck. Personally, I prefer installing it through the Emidec installer since it's fast, smooth and makes sure everything is placed where it should be, but if you'd rather do it manually, you can absolutely grab it directly from the official GitHub page instead. The result will be the same, so go with whatever feels easiest for you. And once Power Tools is installed, go ahead and switch back over to gaming mode. We'll need it to install the Deki Undervolt plugin. When you're back in gaming mode, press the Steam Deck's menu button on the right side to bring up the quick access menu. Then scroll all the way down to the plug icon, the one that looks like a power plug. This is where we will install Deki Undervolt. Now click the little house icon next to the gear to open the plugin store. In the search field type Deki Undervolt or just Undervolt and then click install. Once that's done and the plugin is installed, it's time to switch back to desktop mode again so we can continue setting things up there. Next up it's time to install Cryo Utilities, so we can adjust how much VRAM the Steam Deck uses when playing games. By default it's set to 1GB, but we're going to bump that up to 4GB to get the most out of games like Tears of the Kingdom. So open your browser and google Cryo Utilities GitHub or just click the link I've added to the video description. Once you're on the GitHub page, scroll down to Simple Install and right click the download link and choose Save Link As. Then save the link to your desktop so it's easy to find later. Sometimes the file might download with a .download extension, if that happens just rename the file and remove the .download part at the end, otherwise it won't run. And once the file has finished downloading and you renamed it, go ahead and launch the installer. If you're prompted to use your pseudo password, just type it in, the same one we set earlier in this guide. If the installation is successful you should now see a cryo utilities icon on your desktop, but if you don't see it there, no worries, just click the Steam Deck menu in the bottom left corner and search for cryo utilities manually. And once you've found it, go ahead and launch the app. Every time you launch Cryo Utilities, it will ask you for your pseudo password, so just enter it when prompted. Once you're in, you'll land on the start page. From here you can click recommended if you want Cryo Utilities to apply all the best settings for your Steam Deck. But for this guide, what we're really after is the VRAM configuration. So go ahead and tap on the VRAM tab. Here you'll see that your current VRAM is set to 1GB by default. You'll also find a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to change that to 4GB, which is what we want. To do this you'll need to completely power off your Steam Deck. Once it's off, press and hold the volume up button, then tap the power button until you hear the startup chime. Then let go of both buttons. You will now boot into the BIOS where we can change the VRAM. Navigate to Setup Utility, then click on Advanced and then UMA frame buffer size. 
change the value to 4 GB. When that's done, save and exit, and your deck will reboot into the new VRAM settings. Back in desktop mode, go ahead and launch Cryo Utilities once again, head over to the VRAM tab and you should now see the setting has successfully been updated to 4GB, just as we wanted. Alright, time to install our Switch emulator. The one we'll be using in this video is the new pre-alpha emulator Eden. The reason? It has already proven to be surprisingly stable and well optimized for certain Switch titles, Tears of the Kingdom being one of them. So head over to Google and search for Eden Emulator GitHub or just click the link in the video description. Once you're there, download the latest app image release. As of the time for recording this video, the latest version is 0.0.2 .0 pre-alpha. And we're also going to use NX Optimizer mods for Tears of the Kingdom to make the game run even better on Steam Deck. You can either download NX Optimizer directly from the developer if you want to fine tune everything yourself, or to save a lot of time, you can simply use the pre-configured mod package I've linked down in the video description. It includes all the recommended settings from NX Optimizer, so you don't have to worry about setting everything up manually. And to actually get the emulator up and running, your Tears of the Kingdom dump isn't the only thing you need. You also need the official Nintendo Switch firmware and something called prod.keys. Think of prod.keys as digital fingerprints. They're unique to your games and essential for decrypting and running them properly in the emulator. If you have a modded Switch like I showed you earlier, you can easily extract both the firmware and your own keys directly from your device. If not, you have to do a bit of digging online to find them. Just be aware that these files are considered copyrighted material, so proceed at your own discretion. And once you have both the firmware and the keys, installing them is pretty straightforward. Just launch Eden and head up to the tools menu at the top. From there you'll find clear options to install both the firmware and keys directly into the emulator. And finally, once everything is installed and set up, go ahead and double click anywhere inside the Eden emulator window. This will let you set the path to your games folder. And once you pointed out the directory where your Tears of the Kingdom dump is located, it should immediately show up in the game list inside the emulator. I also like to update my game version to 1.2.1 for improved performance and stability. This step is optional since the mods we're using should still work with just the base version of the game, but if you do have the update ready, just head to the file menu in the top left corner of the emulator and click on install files to NAND. Then simply select your update file and it should install without any issues. It's a quick extra step that could make your gameplay just a bit smoother. Before we install the NX Optimizer settings, I'll quickly show you exactly which settings you should use for Tears of the Kingdom. Rather than going through every single option one by one, I stay quiet and simply let you follow along as I make the changes on screen. Just mirror my settings to get the best performance possible. Now it's time to install the NX Optimizer settings. Start by extracting the content from the TOTK optimized zip file that you found in the video description. And once that is done, go into your emulator, right click on Tears of the Kingdom and select Open Mod Data Location. Inside that folder, drag and drop the newly extracted TOTK optimized folder and that's it, now the mods should be installed and ready to use. And as you can see, alongside the game update I installed earlier, the TOTK Optimizer mod now also appears in the list. This means everything is in place and correctly loaded. Your Tears of the Kingdom setup is now optimized and almost ready to go. I say almost ready because before we jump into gaming we need to make sure that the Eden app image is set as an executable app so we can launch it directly from our Steam library in gaming mode. And if you have used Emidec before to install emulators and tools, this will be super simple. You can just go ahead and skip to the next chapter in this video if you have. But if you prefer to do it manually, here's how. First, download App Image Launcher Lite using the direct link in the video description. Once downloaded, make sure to place the file in your Steam Deck's home folder, and this step is mandatory for the installation to work properly. Next, open your Steam Deck's terminal, copy the command that you also find in the video description and paste it in. Then press Enter. If everything goes as it should, you should see a confirmation that App Image Launcher Lite has been successfully installed and ready to go. 
Now the app image you place in the home folder's applications folder should automatically be available to add to your Steam library as a non-Steam game. And if you're an Emidec user coming from the previous chapter in this video, you should already have this applications folder set up, so you can continue from here without any extra steps. But if you run into issues, feel free to revisit the previous chapter and follow the same process outlined there. So go ahead and drag and drop your Eden app image into the applications folder in your home directory, and you're ready for the next step. And that is to open your Steam library and then go down to the bottom left and click on add a game, followed by add a non-Steam game. Next, click on browse down in the left corner and navigate to home and applications. There you can locate your Eden app image, select it and click add selected programs. And that's it, the Eden emulator is now officially added to your Steam library. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we can finally return to gaming mode for the final adjustments before we jump into the game itself. Let's finish this setup strong. To start the emulator, just press the Steam button, head over to your library and then select non-Steam games on the right side. Scroll down the list until you spot Eden. You can of course rename it and add some nice box art later on if you want to make things look prettier, but that's not something I'll cover in this tutorial. Instead, go ahead and launch Eden now so we can get into the final setup. And first of all, click on Emulation in the top menu, then select Configure, and from there go to the Controls tab and make sure that your input device is set to Steam Deck Controller 0. That should get your buttons and sticks working just fine, but if you're having trouble getting gyro controls to work, leave a comment down below and I'll either link you to one of my other videos that explains it or reply directly with instructions. It really depends on how your Steam Deck has been set up previously. Now go ahead and double click your game to finally test it out. Once it's loaded you can click on view in the top menu and select full screen for a more immersive experience. And if you prefer to play in that way every time you can also set it to always launch in full screen by heading to the emulator settings. And now for this last part I'm just going to scroll through my settings for power tools, decky undervolt and a few others, so make sure to copy them exactly to get the same results. With these tweaks you'll be able to run Tears of the Kingdom on your Steam Deck at nearly locked 30 FPS smooth and stable and fully playable from start to finish. Pause where needed, match the settings and you'll be good to go. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial on how to play Tears of the Kingdom on your Steam Deck in 2025. Sure, the process can feel a bit overwhelming at times, I totally get that, but in the end it's absolutely worth it. What we have done here is combine a handful of essential tweaks and optimizations to get the most out of Valve's handheld. We installed Eden Emulator, configured NX Optimizer and custom settings, set up tools like Cryo Utilities, Power Tools and Decky Undervolt, and made sure everything was running through Steam Deck's gaming mode with 4GB of VRAM. The real trick here is fine tuning the performance. For best results you want to set your GPU clock at 1000 MHz and not 1600 like you might assume. That way your deck can redirect more power to keep the CPU locked at 35 MHz, which is what really makes the difference in a game like Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching, if this guide helped you out in any way or if you just enjoyed it, please drop a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, and consider subscribing for more Steam Deck and emulation content in the future. And of course, happy gaming!